Hello everybody, it's Get On Extra Time. Yes, something's a little bit different uh, in the wings today. We'll talk about that in a moment, but a star-studded lineup again for another big weekend of racing around the country. Simon Marshall, Brent Sarafa Great to with be us. Here. BC, welcome back from Hong Kong. How was the trip? It was outstanding. Uh, great racing, great hospitality, such a fun place to be for International Week. And our good friend Clint Hutchison was up there, Jason Richardson, and uh, plenty of uh, Australians as well. There was so many people from from right across Sydney, Melbourne, uh, a lot of racing fans, a lot of get-on fans um, that were certainly making themselves well-known in the city of Hong Kong well, last week. Well, the pictures looked uh, fantastic. And, Cat. well, Simon Marshall, you've had your usual start to, to the day. You've had your rainbow cookie and you've uh, had a fight with your computer. <laughs> so yep. you're up and about. It's magnificent stuff, but there's, geez, I mean, there's been a lot of elves on shelves go missing leading into Christmas. Mm. And talking about yeah, it's a bit Lizzie Jelfs on a shelf, we're missing Lizzie, unfortunately, but we do have a zooming in, do we? Well, I think we do, because as we say in the racing uh, landscape, uh, Lizzie Jelfs absent due to uh, transport hey. difficulties, but here she is, zooming in uh, from Maitland. How are you, Lizzie? <laughs> <laughs> Very well, thank you, guys. Yeah, good to be with you. Apologies for not being there in person, but looking forward to the weekend. Uh, it's sort of a bit of a change, isn't it, over the next few weeks. We've gone from that spring racing, we culminated with Ballarat Cup Day last week in torrid conditions, and now we're back into the sort of summer scene where we're going to be seeing plenty of two-year-olds stepping out across Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, and we're sort of working into that Magic Millions carnival over in the new year. Now, you usually keep us in shape here on Get On Extra, Lizzie. We feel like the uh, the kids with the, without the relief teacher. Well, um, it's I, don't, I would like to say it's in good hands, but I'm not too sure it is, Maddie, with you in charge. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll take that swipe uh, and take it proudly. Let's have a look at the early cash because there's plenty of great racing around the country starting off at uh, Caulfield. And there's a two-year-old that has attracted the attention of one Simon Marshall and probably named after him as well, Little Stirrer for Lindsay Park. She's a lovely little filly and I love the way she uh, has shown her sharpness in jump outs at Flemington in particular. Now there's a short price favourite in Traffic Warden at $1.75 way too short for me. I like this filly drawn out a little bit. She can zoom across early, sit on speed. She had plenty to give, I thought, in her trial and I think we can get the early cash there. Mickey D for Team Hayes who can produce a two-year-old filly. Mm, yes, uh, Little Stirrer who was excellent in that jump out but uh, we've got Lizzie going against you already with oh. Traffic Warden who's the odds on favourites. Had one race start already, Lizzie. I do. I look, I think that um, when you look at this race, he's a horse that has got, uh, he ran really well first up at Rose Hill. He ran in probably one of the toughest races that we've seen. Storm Boy was able to win on that occasion, but I loved the way that he found the line. He does get back and find the line strongly, but I just think he's well suited. The form is stacking up around him. And also, I know he's a short quote, but I think he's the type of horse you're going to be seeing featuring more of the um, competitive two-year-old races. So I'm happy to go up against it, Simon. And I did think it was very well named, a horse that is called Little Stirrer that Simon is tipping. <laughs> ah, touche, Lizzie, but she is a filly. Chelsea on the Chelsea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what about uh, you, BZ? Now, you've gone for a horse that uh, doesn't win out of turn. No, but he's on the quick backup in Alhambra Ladin. I think he's well suited now. Third up, 2,400 metres from a soft draw. He can go forward. And with a rail out 10 metres, uh, as we saw on Thursday where the rail is in the same position, clearly no disadvantage to be up on speed and close to the inside, and I think that's where Alhambra Lad will be. His form through the sort of back end of last season through winter was very solid, and I think he's ready to peak now on Saturday. All right, that's in race number two at Caulfield for BZ, and I know Simon's in agreement with a horse in race number three on the program, Foolproof, who was very impressive winning under lights at the Valley. Things didn't go 100% this horse's way, had to stick back, sit wide, and ran over the top of them, and did what only good horses do, and I think Foolproof is my Saturday best. Yeah, and very lightly raced. I, I didn't mind the gallop on a big roomy track at Ballarat, uh, foolproof, but to get back at Mooney Valley, have to switch across hills. Rhys McLeod was a good ride, and around him up on that night was a uh, sign of a very good horse on the way up. BZ stays at the mile here, and Reece, I like Friedman sticking with their jockeys as they know their horses better, the devil you know. And this horse at Caulfield, over the mile, drawn a good gate. This also looked the winner, has plenty of upside. What about the stats for Reese McLeod and the Friedman stable? He's only had six rides for him, 
for four wins. Like, so 93% putting him on, return on investment. Putting him on chances there. He's getting the results. He was a narrow winner on Wednesday at Mornington on a uh, short price favourite for the stable. But he seems to be the go-to jockey with a number of the leading jockeys either interstate or having a holiday or going away. Reese McLeod's one that doesn't often get a lot of opportunities from the bigger stables in Melbourne. Mm. But he is a very good rider. And this is like, his time to shine. And I think it's a good chance on Saturday. So uh, it's going to be Reese McLeod and foolproof, we believe, in race number three. That's the early cash. Uh, hopefully we can fill our wallets early and uh, kick into gear into race number four. And a horse that's the class in the race is running by, and the three of us are in agreement. Yeah, very keen. She's my Saturday best. I think she's a really good mare, and we saw that first up at Sandown. She was in a race where south of Houston was coming back from stakes grade, mm. found a good lead on a track that was hard to make up ground, and running by did a really nice job off a long spell to close the gap and really have the flashing light on her head that said next start up in trip out to 1400 metres she's going to be hard to beat and you go back to a previous campaign she was second in a Bendigo Guineas behind Waltz on by we know how solid that form is I think she's been well found but rightly so she wins I have a good day very keen on running by on Saturday <laughs> and if she doesn't win well we're going to need to do some work <laughs> <laughs> well there's plenty to uh, keep us entertained there's plenty of racing over the weekend and Lizzie you believe she's the class of, of race as well yeah, everything that BZ said, uh, she put the flashing light on her running home uh, first up and then she's got that really good second up stat. So she just looks like a, a really good play for Saturday. So race four, number eight running by, I'm also in agreement with the boys. I think there's a horse in race number five that's going to be hard to beat, La Derriere, who's going to attack the line, drawn better this afternoon uh, on Saturday at Caulfield and... I, I reckon this horse is really knocking on the door for Charlotte Littlefield, and hopefully we're not doing our derriere by that time. <laughs> she's flying, this, uh, this horse. Good, the yeah. stable's going really well. Had a good winner during the week, and she's bulletproof. But it was a massive run at the Valley um, for her last Got exposed early at the th uh, 500 and had to round them up, but the last 50 was the finishing better than any And the rain any that night, remember how damp it got? Mm -hmm. the, it yeah. absolutely poured, and I was standing down with Charlotte sort of as she'd led the horse out onto the track and she said, I'm not totally convinced the horse wants really wet ground. So right. the fact that it ran so well, I think is a big tick. And this is the race that's been set for. Gets back onto a firmer surface with Jamie Carr in the Better saddle. suited at Caulfield. Definitely. And let's just face it, the rail stays in the 10 from the uh, earlier meeting in the week. Uh, Thursday, they galloped there. Yep. Um, and the track really played fair, didn't it? I mean, they won three, four, five off. The fence played true. You'd expect them to probably get off a little bit where La Derriere will start to make some ground. And loving that price at uh, double each way. Well, race number seven at Caulfield. This is a really good race. Two horses that have been impressive winning at Mooney Valley under lights, Jambalaya and also Oak Hill and then Ginger and Pink who was impressive winning at Sandown at the midweeks. It's a terrific little race. Uh, Simon and Lizzie in agreement here with Jambalaya. It was an absolute jog wasn't it uh, at Mooney Valley? Uh, Jambalaya, <laughs> Jambalaya. <laughs> Jamie Carr went to Mooney Valley for one ride this night uh, on debut into a dollar ninety-five. Punters were playing in the red, and they doubled down and jumped to the front over six furlongs and just wasn't tested, fully tested at all. And what I love about Team Godolphin, James Cummings and the team, they say, right, we've got a we've got a horse here. We're going to give you twenty-nine days fresh and good month in between. We'll set you for Caulfield six furlongs. See if you can get around there. Jamie Carr, Barrier Seven. Jambalaya, one of the better bets on the program, I would have thought. And Lizzie, you're in full agreement with Jambalaya. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to sing, but oh, I definitely Lizzie. think that she's uh, a filly that we saw. She jumped out really nicely at Flemington and then she backed it up with that easy victory at the Valley. And just from a type perspective, I thought that she was a horse that had lots of upside. So for me, I was looking forward to seeing where she was going to step out. She is short, but I think she'll be winning. OK, we love that fighting talk from Lizzie Jels. And then we move to race number eight. You've got one, BZ. Yeah, I think Helix is going to be quite hard to beat. This horse has been in two tough races its past two starts. The 1,600 metres from a wide gate at Flemington last time out was just a bridge too far. And that was in that country series final. Um, just had to work a little bit too much. And I think it's a complete forgive. Back down to a benchmark 70, back down to 1,400 metres. If you forgive that run and the run prior to that at uh, Mooney Valley was just a prep run to get it ready for the 1,600. 
but this horse is a massive price. Will run a really bold race each way at around sort of seven or eight dollars. I think it can run well. Good price at the eight bucks there too, because Bel Air's been well found early yep. doors in market open. As we know, hit the wash really strong last start, and also Tasman Park. But is Tasman Park a bit of a gunner? He's not that genuine. He almost lights goes, on. Yes, he could be asleep with the lights on. I thought Helix would just scream across from the wide draw, get to a forward position, be hard to beat. All right, Jelf's on the shelf time. <laughs> We've got to keep a tight ship here. It's my big go hosting. Um, and there's some uh, really big news coming up with the Melbourne Racing Club and our great friends at Sportsbet, Simon Marshall. Take it away. Yeah, very honoured on behalf of the family of Sportsbet to announce a five-year partnership here with the MRC. Mr Josh Blanksby there, CEO, and our CEO, Barney Evans, that represents the fam. What a wonderful announcement. Encompasses all three MRC tracks, Caulfield, Mornington, and, of course, uh, Sportsbet. Uh, Sportsbet Sandown now, and there's a little couple of ditties there. In particular, the $1 million bonus if you wow. happen to win the Sportsbet Mornington Cup and the Sportsbet Caulfield Cup in the same calendar year, a million dollar kicker jumps right in there. And we'll, don't, and what about this? LED lighting, the first barriers will be at Caulfield, LED lighting, blinging it up. Twilight meeting, night meeting coming in. We're also investing $125,000 cash into uh, Mornington to bling Mornington up a little bit. And um, so we're, we're painting MRC blue. How good for five years. And I've also noticed, I was out at uh, Caulfield on Thursday and before the races they were testing some of the new sight screens and some of the new graphics that are going to be work. there. And have a look at this, take a look at uh, some of the action here. Have a look at that, it's going to be down the side. <laughs> How good, some of the uh, some of the sideboards and advertising that they're going to be running there. How good is that, Simo? Sorry for that folks at home, that little close up there too. And apparently I'm strobing with me shirt. I must be a robot. But guess who uh, we were able to catch up with some wonderful partnerships out there at Caulfield. And in particular, Jack Gunston and Luke Bruce, what a formidable partnership they were in the forward line. And also Team Hayes, the three brothers, Will JD and Benny Hayes came out to celebrate what is a wonderful partnership with the Sportsbet and the MRC. Well, here we are at the mighty Melbourne Racing Club here and the synergy between the Melbourne Racing Club and Sportsbet for the next five years is only going to get better with the announcement of a five-year partnership uh, starting January the 1st. And well, what better way to go and promote the game than bring two of the most frustrated jockeys I've ever met uh, in AFL being Luke Bruce and also Jackie Gunston. You absolutely love the game. Great to be here. Um, obviously, our partnership was fairly strong on the field. We've had a decent go of the partnership with uh, with ownership with racing. Yeah, we've had a few downs. There's more downs than ups in horse racing sometimes. But yeah, we've got a couple of Group One, oh, Group One winner now, and a couple of Group One runners. So boys can't complain. What about uh, the talk amongst the locker rooms? Is a lot of it racing? Uh, we tell the club it's not, but yeah, uh, behind closed doors, there's always a um, couple of little groups going along and, and talking about the racing and that kind of carnival. So uh, look, racing and, and footy, it's, it's a strong connection. What do you see when you uh, watch the jockeys go out there and ride and go 60 kilometres on 500 kilos? I actually want to try it one day. Yeah. Can you can you sort that out? I want... Well, we've got the Hayes boys that have just <laughs> lobbed, so we're going to... Forget on extra, we're going to organise that. How about that? Lukey Bruce and myself will have a gallop up the old 800 metre hill at Lindsay Park. Partnerships. Geez, it must be difficult uh, amongst the brothers, but how does it work with you boys? I hear it's harder than marriage, so Ben's going to let us know towards the end of the week. Um, but no, it actually it works well. You'd have your disagreements and you probably lack the professional touch to get to the conclusion or getting your point across, but uh, it works well. You can win the Mornington Cup, Benny, and also the Sportsbet Caulfield Cup in the same calendar year. There's a million dollars bonus. Uh, have you got a horse in mind? Yeah, well, we've got a horse like Loft, but he's building up now and uh, you'll start to see more and more of him. He's probably the one that jumps to mind at the moment. It's a great initiative um, and I, I'm expecting the Mornington Cup to be quite strong because a million dollar bonus heading towards a Caulfield Cup is definitely something that trainers will take note of. What's your number one priority going into uh, 2024? To win a Sportsbet Caulfield Cup or another grand final premiership? As long as there's the word cup in there, I'm happy with any of them. <laughs> I Look, I'd love for the young boys to be able to experience a premiership, but I Good haven't won one of the big majors yet, so I'd love to win a Caulfield Cup, that'd be nice. My Yankee girl, good value.
My Yankee Girl is surging away and My Yankee Girl wins it. Captain Envious was huge and I think it'd be hitting its straps right up the outside. Captain Envious, two leaks, three leaks coming clear. Captain Envious won the Ballarat Cup. I think race nine, number three, Taunting's thrown in. Taunting going well and Taunting's going to do it all. Loved it, Taunting. That's why our WA plays with fire. Race five, number seven. Coming with a late run, plays with fire, getting through. Heads are bobbing everywhere. It might have been Pike. Estrapaz, this horse has got a motor. He's been very well placed in a benchmark 64 here. I think he'll be winning. Estrapaz, 50 out. Estrapaz ridden out. And Froggy gets Estrapaz home by two legs. Along with the Hong Kong champion, Golden 60. Yang Zhu Li Zhou, Long Kam, Hong Kong, Yet Li Kam Biu, Wu Yao Hei Bao. Oh, well done, team. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Is it Ballarat? And we couldn't get the English call of Golden 60 That's there, right. I know. You don't need it. No, no indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we well. knew which horse it was. <laughs> uh, are you sure, Lizzie, that you're at home? Uh, we had a fill-up last week. You're not on holidays somewhere, are you? No, de definitely <laughs> not on holidays, Maddie. I'm um, wishful thinking, but hopefully we can have another fill-up this week. It was definitely good work there from yourself, SD and BZ. I, well, BZ wasn't there, actually, no. Grace. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, with, um, I'm at Eagle Farm this week uh, for our best bets elsewhere. Um, I really I really like a horse called Anim Four from uh, the Sean Dwyer stable race two, number uh, three. Um, he's been able to be pretty impressive his last two starts at the Sunshine Coast. It's feature racing um, in Eagle Farm on Saturday. So he's in an earlier race, but I think we can get the cash early with him. So Amon Kaur, uh, he's at the 460 at the moment, and I think he can make it three in a row. Yeah, as Lizzie mentioned, uh, the Grand Prix Stakes is the feature race. Plenty of group action there at Eagle Farm. You like one in the fourth? Yes, I'm going to go four, nine at Eagle Farm. This horse, uh, Fumiko, was having its first start for Tony. Tony Golan from last just went boom, jumped out of the ground like flashing lights, black book, hello, use it on your sports bet app. So I did. Thank you very much, Simo. <laughs> and this all steps up to 1,200 metres. And I just think that uh, from Team Golan, Ryan Maloney to ride from Barrier 4, the 1,200 metres here, track and trip winner. Boomerco. Yeah, another horse who had a booming finish is Knight's Choice. How impressive was it winning at Doom yeah. last time? Now going to Eagle Farm, I think he's going to be suited on the big track. Stays at the 2,000 metres. He's quite a progressive, lightly raced four-year-old. I think he can get, can get to a decent level, and I think he can win again on Saturday. So that's race 10, number three, Knight's Choice. And the feature meeting in Australia really is at Ascot. Uh, and, of course, Damien Oliver, the GOATS, his final ride aboard uh, Munamek uh, in the Gold Rush. And you rode against uh, Damien Oliver many, many times, uh, Simon Marshalls, particularly as a young lad. You, you grew up with him, really. How do you think he's going to go in retirement? Is he retiring, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard. That's new news <laughs> this week. Damien Oliver's retiring. Well, no. It's been a, um, it's been a remarkable uh, career for Damien Oliver because he still all started in Western Australia, of course. He came over here in the trail of uh, the, his brother Jason, who tested himself with Team Friedman. And uh, it's very hard for a lot of the jockeys to settle in because they get homesick very quickly, as Jason did. But uh, Damien came down and he had a very thick skin early doors and a chip on his shoulder to be somebody and make it big. And once he got the opportunity with Team Friedman, who very hard, they were very hard uh, task masks and uh, masters, mm. and uh, but he relished it, Damien, and as soon as he got a sniff away, he went and, um, yeah, you know, arguably one of the great uh, tacticians. But more importantly, the competitiveness, not only to read a race, know his opposition, but read other jockeys and how they were going to ride tactically in a race. He was very, very good at that. Um, the screamer, the yeller, uh, of course, COVID uh, exposed him uh, <laughs> as the number one yeller amongst the jockeys, <laughs> throwing everything in the kitchen sink at those horses. But 129 Group 1 winners, and he spent time five years in Hong Kong, don't forget too. So, um, you know, rem remarkable young man. We wish him, Trisha, and all the kids all the very best. So it's a, it's a special historic day in Western Australia, and of course you're our Western Australian correspondent. You like one in race five. Yeah, so uh, just on the replay there, just getting another one up there. Matthew uh, for the old WA freaks. Yeah, welcome. Um, and I was looking one for uh, Damien Oliver. It's his last day at uh, Ascot there and riding in the saddle before he hangs up the paint and leather boots. And here we go. We're going to go race five, number two, Captain Pluto. This horse is having its second start uh, for Alana and... Uh Yep, exactly. And uh, they've got a real good handle on this horse. So he steps up from 15 to 1,800 metres. Ollie will just have to sit back in the second half of the field and he'll be able to round them up. I think Captain Pluto is really looking for that distance now and Damien Oliver to get a winner 
on his last day in the saddle. There you go. So D Oliver, race five, number two. It's now time for a drum kit. The Ooh. best uh, horses at uh, value to run a drum and... Blazing Rebel for you. Yeah, I like this horse uh, carrying weight. Don't worry about the weight that it's carrying. Last start winner over um, the trip. What I like about uh, over 1,800 metres, I should say, this horse stepping out to 2,000 metres. Four starts for the two wins and two minor placings. Loves the 2,000 metres, and guess what, third up? Gets the 2,000. Unbeaten. Huh? Unbeaten yeah. third up, said you were close. But... Um, <laughs> We remove pin. We'll take the ride here. Uh, so this horse is very good. They're giving us what the wind-up price... music, Simo. Come on, you're taking too long. What price was it's I getting? Too late to the place. Stop it. Stop it. Lizzie, dong. Lizzie, I've got to run a Shove tight ship here. Jumper. What, what do you like? <laughs> it's carnage already. Um, race six, number six, Union Army. I'm um, with him first up into the campaign. He's got a couple of horses he's got to get past, but I think he will be uh, right in the money. Certainly running top three. So that's what you do when the director says, go, hurry up. You go, you go quickly, Simo. It's only a half hour show, is no, it? No, that's very true. Commander Harry 20th? for me. Commander Harry, race six, number six at Caulfield, third up, ready to go close. I'll keep mine nice and brief. Ton of grit. It'll run a nice race and should get into the placings there, race number nine at Caulfield. All right, so it's now time for From the Hilltops. Oh, yes, our <laughs> favourite segment. Now, of course, uh, BZ, you missed last week where we had pig racing figuring wow. uh, prominently. And uh, no animals sure. this week. We're heading to the great, wonderful world of marble racing. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Maddie. the Savage Speedway, Clementine, and also Momo at the head of affairs uh, as we have a look at the starting line up there uh, off the front line. But as we have uh, a look at the final <laughs> lap, lap 10 of 10, and at this stage, it's <laughs> Uh, the Galaxy in front of PRM and then Hazy in third as they come round to the second last chicane. And look at the crowd going ballistic here at the Savage Speedway. So it's Galactic in front of PRM who's trying to pick that to particular marble up. They were followed by Hazy, Momo and then Yellow. Final stages is coming. Oh, look at PRM starting to make up some headway on Galaxy. It's going to be very, very close as they hit the line. Oh. Check and flag. I think we're going to have to look at the replay on the top right. Look at <laughs> oh. an official photo finish. And as we have a look at the final stages, it's Galaxy beating PRM and Hazy on the podium. Gold, silver and bronze. What, look at the crowd what, what nation wild. does that vision come from? Do we know what country that's from? Scary thing is, millions of people watch no. that. Yeah. Millions of people wow. watch that. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a break because we have to. We're being told we have to take a break. Oh, there's not enough O's in smooth here at the moment on Get On Extra. <laughs> Greyhound Racing, she's a pearl one length to Wow She's Fast and then Tyana Bell running on Amron Boy as they turn but Wow She's Fast got up on the rail, Amron Boy storms but the Queen did it, Wow She's Fast has won it, beaten Amron Boy by a neck in a memorable Phoenix. What a race it was, the Phoenix in 2022, taken out by Wow She's Fast over Amron Boy and it's the final night of the Dream Chasers series on Saturday night at the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix at the Meadows and have a look at some of the uh, feature races we've had the uh, pleasure of witnessing over the past couple of weeks. But the Phoenix is the big one worth a lot of money, a million dollars up for grabs to the winner and Mitch Abayer, our Greyhound racing expert. Who do you like in the uh, Phoenix on Saturday night? G'day boys, yeah, this is the big one, the one we've all been waiting for, the fifth part of the Dream Chasers Festival, and we are building to the million dollar winning uh, race in the Phoenix. That will be, in my opinion, I think Hector Forley will win. Box two, he's a greyhound that's absolutely flying at the moment. Um, he's drawn beautifully in box two. He trolled the hands off the clock at Geelong the other day in 2206. Uh, he's, yeah, he's gonna be awfully hard to beat. Uh, I think that where she's fast in box six is actually pretty well drawn. She did it last year off the draw. Can she do it again this year? Uh, this year? She trialled 29 and 49, which is absolutely flying. So if, you had, if she had her doubters, they might have to, uh, you know, second guess come the big race this Saturday night. But Hector Foley for me, it takes a little bit to go against where she's fast being a sports bet man. But I think Hector Foley is the best drawn dog in the race. Beautiful, Mitch. Thanks very much for that. Good luck on Saturday night at the Meadows. And boys, um, 
I thought I, I thought I thought I thought I thought I thought I'd put it cat. Yeah. Just proves you never worked with animals. He's having a thousand or three behind him there and the uh the old pussy there a little bit of something about Mary going on in Mitch's uh, hair as well. Good on you, Mitchy, um, beautiful stuff. Well done, Mitch Bayer, and things. looking forward to the conclusion of the Dream Chasers Festival. Now, Sydney Racing, Lizzie Jelfs, you're all over it. <laughs> yes, certainly. I think that was a dog, actually, uh, not a cat. But anyway, <laughs> race three, That's number funny. 10, is my Saturday best euphoria. I think that when you're looking at this type of race, stepping up in trip from the 1300 last start, was able to win a super maiden. Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott, uh, my Saturday best for Ranwick. I'm pretty keen on toes on the nose. This horse has been flying for John Sargent and Nash Rewilla. No one's riding better in Sydney than Nash at the moment. I think he'll get it home again. Happy to take the short quote. I think it makes at three on the trot. Crafty Eagle for me, uh, eight, six. Race eight, number six there at Randwick. I like the way he hit the wire. Now he gets out to the six furlongs here. Johnny Thompson, Tyler Schiller. Um, that was a good gallop there. So eight, 1,400 metres here. First up was 1,200. 1,400 metres here is perfect for him. Crafty Eagle. And BZ, they're coming at us like Gatling guns here. More winners. Yeah, I thought Louisville um, back to uh, off the back of a nice performance last time out with Tommy Berry in the saddle be hard to beat. And Lizzie, you thought it'd be hard to beat as well? Yeah, I did, BZ. Uh, I just think he's actually a horse with a lot of ability and the race looks to suit him really nicely. There's a bit of speed on for him to finish off. His last 50 in each and every one of his starts has been his best. And I think he's a horse that you're going to see a lot more over these coming months. Yeah, and Lizzie, whilst we've got you, you also liked one in race seven. I do. She's just winning at the moment, Lekvate. She's uh, double the price that she has been previously. She, There's no reason why she can't go on with it again. So race seven, number 13, Lekvate. It's probably her stiffest test to date, but she's come back even better than last preparation, and I think she's going to be right in the money on Saturday. And the lucky last, Simo. Yeah, I'll bring us home. Race 10, number two, Dalalat. I love the five-week fresh, and Dalalat was very good last start. was only beaten 0.4 of a length, and that was to uh, Capo Strata. That was a benchmark 84. We're going back to a benchmark 78 here. Dalalat in the last, number two. Well, it's that time of year. It's getting a bit warm, so we need a back sack and crack. And <laughs> what are we backing here? Uh, starting off with you, Simo, flying can chill wow. out. Yeah, I mean, wow. the favourite's very short there, but this horse, I like the way he was able to put two together last start. 46 bucks can run the drum. Lizzie? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, look, definitely I'm I'm not holding up the team this week, but um, I'm with Union Army. He was a bit, bit better odds than the, the 650 when I put him in. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky Casanova second up for mine. Yeah, I like Helix each way. I think it'll run a big race. And Lizzie. who are we questioning here with the sack file? Traffic Warden. So I'm taking on Lizzie in the first, the Traffic Warden. A little stirrer will be in front. Just got to hold on that last 50. What about you, Lizzie? Uh, I'm with Tim Finnis. I think he's um, he's had his birthday. Is it me? Had that victory there at Cranbourne? Yeah, Fresh um, ball again. Yeah, wasn't much in at that time in that contest, and I think there's a little bit more depth in this race as well. So how are we going to make some cash with the crack file? Uh, for mine, I'm going foolproof along with you, Simo. Yes, foolproof. Stays at the mile, drawn beautifully. Come on, Reese McLeod, make the most of the opportunity. And Lizzie, you're with Sephoria in race three in Sydney. I am. She's going to be up in front. She's going to be really hard to get past. Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott are absolutely flying and they continue to do so. I think she will be very hard to beat. And I'm with running by. I thought her first up effort was outstanding at uh, Sandown. She looks suited going up to the 1,400 metres. Now, collectively, uh, Lizzie via Zoom and myself, we're holding our breath. Uh-oh. SD's bit. Uh-oh. It's a good one. <laughs> what did the egg say to the boiling water? Oh, God. Sorry, what? No, 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 I'm not, not allowed to go with that one. <laughs> OK. <laughs> what did the Tick and the Eiffel Tower have in common? They're both parasites. Uh, para, hang on a para, minute, we've used that, was that before. The one parasites. Used. We've already used that <laughs> before. You pitched my joke. Well, Maddie, it was a good one. I thought I'd rehash it. <laughs> oh, that's outrageous. Well, anyway, that was episode 20 of Get On Extra. With a bit what of luck, we're here for episode 21 next week. Boiling water that's have in common. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.